I have been shocked by this filter. Shocked and appalled by the Optolong L Enhance narrowband filter that was kindly loaned to me from First Light Optics. You may have noticed that multi-band pass narrowband filters are sort of in vogue at the minute, they're really popular, and for good reason also. They let people who live in light polluted cities and areas cut through all that muck and image emission nebulas with greater colours, clarity and contrast. The Optolong L Enhance lets through hydrogen alpha, hydrogen beta and oxygen 3. This makes it a triple band pass filter, and this is really useful for people imaging with colour cameras. And this is down to where they are on this visible spectrum of light. So this means that all red, green and blue pixels are gaining useful light. And like if you're using a standard filter like a hydrogen alpha filter, which is widely agreed to only pass through light on the red pixel. I use this filter in conjunction with the ZWO ASI 533MC Pro, which I reviewed and you can find up there. For the Optolong L Enhanced, the band passes seem to be about 12 nanometers for hydrogen alpha and about 30 nanometers for the hydrogen beta and oxygen 3. Now I had to work these out myself by using the transmission chart and making my own little scale. So take these with a bit of a pinch of salt. I can't find the band pass measurements anywhere on any website I've asked and I've had no joy. So that's how I had to work it out. The transmission efficiency of this filter is greater than 90%. Using my own little scale, the hydrogen alpha turns out to be about 94%, whilst oxygen 3 and HB turns out to be about 95%, so quite efficient. And this was rather observed. When I was using this filter myself, It, but I can believe it. I have no way of measuring this personally, but you know what? The images I was getting were really good. In my time with this filter, I've used this on a variety of emission targets, and I feel like each one has come out quite nicely with really nice colors and contrast to the background sky. I live in Bortle Six Skies and I found out this works quite nice. So what about the downsides? With any multi-band pass filter, the Oxygen 3 line is going to let through Moon Glow. It can't resist Moon Glow as good as Hydrogen Alpha. So if you look at this picture of the bubble nebula I took, right at the top here, can you see this glow is coming in? That was from the moon. There'll be higher resolution photos available to see on my website, link in the description. So when the moon is out greater than 60%, you might begin to see moon leakage. It all depends on where you're shooting compared to where the moon is, but you'll probably begin to notice glow. Use this filter between new moon and first quarter, or third quarter and the end of the moon cycle, you should be good to go. Really though, for harsher moon glow, I will be deferring you to an actual dedicated hydrogen alpha filter. The narrower, the better. I wish the box was a bit more informative, however, because this is just a plain box with... <laughs> the box the box has a picture of a H-alpha filter on it, but it's clearly the L Enhance filter. <laughs> I really wish the box was right. Okay, assuming that that was a mistake. The box is undescriptive, it tells you nothing about it, it just tells you what the filter is. There's no... Oh, and it, that is the L Enhanced 2 inch. There's nothing else going on the box, it's really indescriptive. I wish there was a bit more information, like band passes maybe, on the box. At the time of this video, the L Enhanced is available in one and a quarter and two inch variants. Now this is really convenient for people using coma correctors, field flatteners, or just general nose pieces, because it just fits straight onto them. However, if you are a DSLR user, you're being left out in the cold because there are no clipping variants available at this time. So if you use a DSLR and you enjoy using your like fast lenses, like the Rokonons and things like that, you're kind of left out at this time. So I really hope that they release a clipping version for the DSLR users. When I was first using this filter, I was realizing that there was a pretty strong blue color cast coming in all the photos I had raw in APT. But this is down to the Debayer preview and it's actually sorted out during color calibration and stacking. There was no excessive blue tint left over the final stack. It blocks a lot of light pollution and just leaves those nice colors coming through. You then have the option of splitting the hydrogen alpha from the oxygen 3, but not the oxygen 3 from the hydrogen beta because they're on the same pixels. And Programs such as Astro Pixel Processor and PixInsight, I believe, are able to do this. This then gives you greater control in the actual processing stage, where you can then mix and match these channels to your own taste. However, onto my absolute favorite thing about this filter, no halos. That is right, when I was using this filter with the ASI 533, 
I observed no halos. Here is a 10 minute sub exposure of IC63, the ghost of Cassiopeia with the bright star Navi in the frame. And what can you see? There are no halos around Navi. I love it, amazing result. It's my favorite thing about this filter because halos for me are a complete no-no. So in summary, this filter performed really well in my Bortle 5 to 6 skies. Though I did also ask my friend in Mexico City, who's Bortle 8 to 9, and he basically said the filter is a must. I was using 5 minute long exposures with the 533 MC Pro, however because the narrowest band pass is 12 nanometers for the HA, I'm fairly confident to say that you'll be able to use this filter with the DSLR as well. And as I already mentioned, no halos found, and the opportunity of making a bicolor image in one night is really good. I would love to see a DSLR clip-in version for those who love using their super fast wide lenses, and I'd also really like them to just tell us what these band passes are, so you don't have to go make a silly little scale on Photoshop. <laughs> it took so long. The filter, at the time of review, has an RRP of £145, though currently seems to be on offer for £129 for the one and a quarter inch version, or £185 on offer £166 for the two inch version. It's a good price, definitely up there a little bit, nearly £200 for the two inch version, but I believe it's worth the money. Use this filter correctly away from major moon glow and you're gonna get some solid results. Now I'm not here to tell you how to spend your money, but if you like narrowband imaging with a one shot color camera, then I think adding an L enhanced filter to your arsenal is gonna be a very good choice. Or if you use mono cameras, using as a super luminance layer, also it's beneficial. And as soon as I have the money for it, I think I'm gonna be adding one of these filters to my own collection as well. Links in the video description if you're interested. Thanks very much for watching everybody. If you disliked this video well, then you know what to do. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more content like this. Now I admit that it was pretty hard to find things I disliked about the Allen Hands, but I always do my best to balance the bugs. And what do you think of the Allen Hands? Are you looking into a multi-band pass narrowband filter? Do you shoot with a DSLR or a dedicated camera? Let me know in the comments below. And with that, it's time to say, clear skies want to know, keep looking up and keep them cameras clicking. I'll see you later.